Hi, welcome to module three. This week, most of your time is going to be spent on things related to the single source project. Some of your work will be done as an individual. You'll be learning to write modular content or topic based content. You're also going to, as a team, work on a content model for the project and the, the server information that you have available in Flare. All right, so let me give you a few tips about how to handle things this week. So as I said, most of your work is in the single source project, so it appears in orange on the Gantt chart. By midweek, you're going to work as an individual to complete that topic-based authoring tutorial. It helps you begin transforming content. By the end of the week, your team will have created a content model. As usual, you're also going to submit a discussion post with your reactions to the assigned instructional materials and your activities during the week. You're going to complete an individual tutorial this week to develop literacy and authoring modular content. You'll need, of course, to read the assignment. Uh, you also need the instruction in both your assigned reading and my video lecture to complete this tutorial. If you haven't already, you should download the Flare Project zip file with the Zen 4 content from their original two guides, then import it into Flare to create a new project for your team. Most of the team single source project requires that you focus on a portion of the original Zen 4 content. So that means chapter one in both guides. There are the sections on system and architectural overview and technical overview. And then also the product support appendices, which have different letters, Appendix A in the software guide, Appendix B in the hardware guide. You may have to look outside of that subset of content to find what you need for this specific assignment. Although most of your work will be done with a subset of the Zen 4 content, both of this week's assignments guarantee you have at least some understanding of the overall content for installing and configuring the Zen 4 server. Remember that Flare automatically created a topic file from any chunk of content between first level headings in those FrameMaker files. That means an automatically created topic file might be either too big or too small to work well. You have the freedom to combine or split content however you must in order to create one high quality example topic for each of the three types. So that's a task, a reference, and a concept. You may find it easier if you look at the content in both the PDFs, the original PDFs, and the topic files in Flare. Using Flare, you're going to rewrite the three topics you selected into structured content using what you learned from my lecture and also a reference called Jorsic's Content Development Guide. There's a link to that on Canvas. Remember that Flare does not support XML tags used in DITA, but you can still structure your topic with the type of information or elements required when conforming to DITA standards. Save the topic files you create with new names that indicate both the topic type and your identity. Just follow the directions on Canvas. You don't want to edit or remove a teammate's work on this individual assignment. You'll commit those files to Central, where we can view them. I've estimated the time required to complete this tutorial at two and a half hours. As a team, you're going to create a model of the content you're working with in the overall single source project. You're going to submit it at the end of the week. To complete this aspect of the project would require far more time than you really have in the course. So you're going to work on a subset of content and please understand, I expect you to simply do the best you can with the four hours that has been allocated. So to begin, obviously you need to read the requirements for the assignment carefully. Watch my video lecture. It teaches you how to model content by structuring it at the topic level using data principles. You'll use that on the individual assignment. And then at the macro level using information architecture principles here from my lecture. You're going to work from a simplified content inventory of the Zen 4 topic files in Flare. I'm supplying that to you instead of asking you to complete a content inventory on your own. You just download that spreadsheet from the assignment on Canvas. Your team will build a content model by working at two different levels, the micro level for the individual topic files and the macro level 
for all the Zen 4 content you have. At the topic level, your team's going to categorize each topic file in the content inventory as one of the three base data types. You're also going to create one topic template in Flare for each topic type in your Zen 4 content. At a minimum, you're going to create three base data templates. After you get to know the Zen 4 content, if you decide that it really requires, let's say, three different task types and two different types of references, that's totally up to you. At the macro level, your team will develop some type of a taxonomy of the entire Zen 4 content, and ultimately, you're going to determine preferred terms for use as keywords, and also metadata for use in your topic files. So here's what your team is going to submit for the team content model assignment. The first deliverable is the spreadsheet from the content inventory to which you will have added two types of information. First, the topic type for every topic file in Flare, and then second, potential keywords or metadata only for the topic files that you're going to continue working with for the rest of the project. So that means the stuff for chapter one in both guides, the appendix on product support. The second deliverable is your topic type templates, which you'll submit by committing them to central. And you'll have at least three of those, one for each base data type. Let me warn you again, there's no single correct model. I've allocated four hours for each team member to spend on the content model assignment. Just do the best you can with the time you have. Question post this week, there are three requirements after you spend some time with the instructional materials. First, respond to a post by one of your classmates, and then uh, you're going to share two things, as usual, that you learned from the instructional materials. Finally, you'll update us on how it went this last week with whatever specific technique you decided to use to improve self-regulated learning. I've estimated the time required to complete the discussion post this week, Module 3, about an hour. Okay, so also don't forget that you need to schedule and have a Zoom meeting with me by midweek in Module 4. So if you haven't scheduled one or had your meeting yet, do it now. Good luck this week.